So we talked about a couple of different antennas you can buy. Now what about an antenna that you can build? Maybe you're a maker, maybe you just wanna do something different, maybe you wanna save a few bucks. We're gonna build two single band dipoles out of this roll of speaker wire. K4NEH, this is When we're building a dipole, there's a formula you're going to use to calculate the distance. And that formula is 468 divided by the frequency you want to operate on. For this exercise, we're going to do two dipoles. One's a 20 meter and one's a 40 meter. So I went ahead and made some notes on the lengths I need. When I calculate out the 20 meter dipole, that 468 divided by 14,250 tells me each side needs to be about 16 and a half feet. On the 40 meter dipole, each side needs to be 32 and a half feet. So we'll use those measurements to cut our wire. All right, so we need our 16 and a half feet worth of wire to do our 20 meter dipole. Now there's a lot of different ways to measure it out. All I did was spread these two chairs 16 and a half feet apart, and I'm gonna run the cable in between them. So we'll tie some on this end, and we'll run it to the other chair. I'm gonna leave myself about a foot extra slack, and cut the cable. Now, if you noticed, a full length of the dipole is just under 33 feet, but I only cut 16 and a half feet. Well, the reason I did that is because I'm using speaker wire. It has two conductors. I can just pull the conductors apart and I have equal size conductors on each side of my dipole. Now I moved the other chair just a little bit closer because we want 32 and a half feet on the side. I'm going to connect up here, wrap it around that end and come back. Now in my mind, having a little bit extra is not a bad thing because we are gonna tune this and we're gonna to wanna to wrap it and adjust it. And it's a lot easier to take line off than it is to add extra wire. So next up, we're gonna connect up the wire in this antenna to a ballon. This is a commercial ballon from LDG, runs about 30 bucks. It's got a current ballon in it, so it gives you a little extra protection from getting RF on your coax, but it's uh, easy to find and easy to use. First thing we need to do, strip the ends of these wires. Now, the gauge of the wire you choose does make a little bit of difference in the bandwidth you get, but the difference between like 14 gauge and 16 gauge is really not gonna be significant for our application. This ballon is set for up to 200 watts, so it's great for running 100 watts in the park. Now, to get the, the wire connected here, we just unscrew these uh, terminal poles. There's a little hole. We can just sneak each end through the hole and tighten it down or we can just wrap it around and tighten it down. All right, wrap these around the binding post and tighten them down. I'm gonna come back and add some strain relief later with some uh, wire ties, but for now, this is all I needed to get connected. Now's a good time to strip these two elements apart and it's really easy. We'll just pull them apart and be ready to go. All right, one more thing to do before we get to the park is put some dog bones on this end of the antenna so we've got some insulation between the tree, the rope, whatever we're gonna tie this off to. This is really easy to do. These I 3D printed online. You can buy them for a couple of bucks at a ham fest. We're gonna just, it's just slide it through. We did not need to strip this. We just slide it through and we're gonna just whip stitch it around to hold it tight. We don't need to seal it or tie it or do anything else to it. This will hold on its own pretty well. And we're gonna be moving these in and out as we're actually tuning the antenna later. So just as a placeholder for now. One thing I am being careful of is making sure I put the same length of wire on both sides. Makes it harder to tune if you've got ends of a dipole that are slightly different lengths. Not impossible, but good way to just keep an eye on it is to try and keep it as symmetrical as you can. So there we go. There's the two ends on our 20 meter dipole. We're just gonna wrap this up and be ready to take it to the park tomorrow. On the 40 meter antenna, I'm using a homemade ballon. This is a 3D printed device that has an SO239 connected to it. I soldered up some wires and connected those up, made myself some terminals so I can connect the ends of the antenna. Take a look. Now for the ends we're connecting up here, gives me a nice hole to run through for doing some uh, strain relief. So I'll run these through each of the holes and strip the ends.
and I'll bind these ends onto the ballon with some wing nuts. Okay, so this is connected up. One of the nice parts about this is it has the strain relief built in. Uh, a difference than the other ballon we showed, that one actually had a, a current ballon inside, so a toroid to help some reflection off of the antenna in case it was going on the feed line. This doesn't have that, maybe not critical when operating at 100 watts, you be the judge. So the parts kit for this is really just a couple of bolts here and here, as well as this SO239 connector, a couple of bucks at a hand fest, and 3D printing this piece. To make life a little bit easier, I didn't strip this all the way so it'll be a little bit easier to transport. I will still put the dog bones on and look, matching dog bones for my antenna that I 3D printed as well. Uh, we'll put those on, they'll be ready to go for tomorrow too. So we're all wound up, ready to go. Let's go take a look at them side by side. So what are some benefits of building your own dipole? Well, first you get exactly on the frequency you want. You're not making a compromise by doing it multiple frequencies. Second, price is definitely a factor. We bought a roll of speaker wire. It was $30 for 200 feet. So we could make four or five more antennas and still have some left over. Again, you can choose which battle you want. So there's some customization there as well. And you can go out and work the world with just a dipole. Head on over to hamradioprep.com to get started with our online courses. It's the fastest, easiest, and most fun way to pass your ham radio license exam.